March 31st was made a holiday in honor of Cesar Chavez in 2014. The United States, in the United States, starting in the 1960s, Chavez was involved in the farm workers labor movement in California. Along with a dedicated and passionate team of organizers, including Alicio Medina, a Mexican born farm worker, Chris Hartmeyer, a Protestant minister, and Jerry Cohen, a future labor lawyer, the United Farm Workers Union was born. The UFW galvanized the poorest of the poor migrant farm workers to win with massive actions in their struggle against unfair wages, inadequate housing, citizenship rights, and working hours leading to the passage of the California Agricultural Labor Relations Act of 1975. What is not known by many outside of his circle of ardent supporters and former union members on the left is that during Chavez's leadership of the United Farm Workers Union, Chavez began a new religious order with Chris Hartmeyer using the technique of a rehabilitation counselor, Charles Diedrich called the game. Using this technique, Chavez subjected new and old members to psychological attacks during community, community meetings. Following this period, many leaders resigned, including Alicio Medina. We are not often subjected to the full story of our heroes, which does both us and the hero of our tale a disservice. We do not get to understand where we as a society failed in our compassion during the growth of this particular human. We have failed to understand the web of interdependent relationships. We have also failed to learn about where there are cracks in our covenants with each other, for example, within our organizations. He committed these harmful and illegal actions full stop. Also, his work, along with so many others in the labor movement, has shown the wider society time and time again for the need of fundamental and urgent change. In the January 22 edition of the Labor Notes, published monthly by the Labor Education and Research Project in Detroit, Michigan, 10th grade English teacher Sean Steele spoke about teaching conditions in Lawrence, Massachusetts since the pandemic started, where feelings of striking are near boiling point. Quote, Lawrence has always been a district that is undervalued, but it has reached a breaking point since the pandemic. End quote. The article also reports that Lawrence High School started the school year with 42 educators short due to the pandemic with six fights occurring in mid-October alone, where because of the fights, the police were called and arrests were made. Due to the understaffing of the school, students sometimes report to a class with no teacher. Bathrooms are currently locked because there is not enough staff to supervise the hallways. The town of Lawrence is located 20 miles outside of Boston which is known for the 1912 textile workers strike, also called the Bread and Roses strike. Bread and Roses was used in a speech by suffragette Helen Todd, which inspired poet John Oppenheim. His poem was set to music and is what is in our hymnal and a song that you will hear in this service. After working so many dead jobs, dead end jobs in myself and jobs that were high in passion, but low in pay. After taking some time to heal the false notion that my lack of a living wage for full-time and part-time work was somehow a reflection of my poor negotiation skills or worse, my character. The words of bread and roses fall on me like a myth, a mist of relief. We need to survive this capitalistic system that we are a part of, but we also need to thrive in our lives. And so will the community that we are a part of. Like the poem states, yes, it is bread we fight for, but we want roses too. One of the descriptors we use for the working class in the United States is salt of the earth. 
When we use this phrase, we are usually referring to people who work closely with the earth, like farmers and fisher folk, but not always. These workers are usually working long and hard hours, which we use in conversation to imply, like a stereotype, that these are simple but honest people, still connected to the earth and are still in line with their values more than the rest of us. Salt of the earth appears in the Bible in the New Testament book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 13. This is the context of the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus is delivering instructions to those that would want to consider themselves faithful to his teachings. Salt was an extremely important spice in first century Palestine, warding off infection and guarding against impurities and enhancing the flavor of food. His disciples should be like salt influencing society and making the world a better place in the here and now. Salt that has ceased to be salty is of no use. I take it to mean not that if we don't behave a certain way, then we are worthless, but that our works will be dead. If we are to be members of a living tradition that orders our lives according to our principles and sources, then our professional work and our personal work must be as salt would be. I see the work that we do in our society, the way we are forced to participate in capitalism or not, and the work we do in our spiritual lives as connected. It is difficult to be reminded of the inherent dignity and worth of anyone, least of all ourselves, after a 100-hour work week, an extremely long commute, being unable to afford access to quality health care. In my experience, we bleed the passion out of and hold under a bushel the light of ourselves and others by organizing our society in this way. How can we think of new ways to work that would be more life-affirming in all the ways for the widest amount of people? This is a massive problem that will take time. I offer no solutions. It requires as many of us that can and are willing to brainstorm with us to be with us. How can we get a little more free, even if it is only in our minds today, in the way we imagine work to be, the way we hold ourselves accountable for work done and not done, tasks done and left undone because you wanted to spend time outside? This is my hope for myself as I go into ministries in the future for my 10 year old nephew and for all of us. Blessed be, amen, Ashe.